Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful, spring day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, deep in the oasis of freedom. It is a gorgeous Friday morning. I think it's March 4th, 2022, somewhere around there. So I have got to get back to the deconstruction project from hell that I am embroiled in. But since it is Friday, now do what I do every Friday or try to do, and that is bring you my ecological meltdown roundup rant where we're going to go over and check in with mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com bringing us uh, their weekly laundry list of assaults against this collapsing planet while all eyes are turned toward the distraction over there in Europe. I don't think we're going to hear the word Ukraine mentioned anywhere in the ecological meltdown roundup rant. I'm pretty sure Rhett is doing us the kindness of not uh, talking uh, about that. But So what is on the minds of Rhett Butler and good lord and once again we have an overflowing crop of disaster and doom and gloom. Uh, we're going to start out in the Congo rainforest in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, this is a very complicated story that I can't really get into about these carbon trading schemes. I know Rhett Butler is a fan of these things. I think that they are unadulterated greenwashing horse shit. These carbon trading schemes. And so they revealed timber giant quietly converts Congo logging sites into carbon schemes. An investigation by this uh, whistleblower group has found evidence of irregularities in the allocation of conservation concessions and carbon trading schemes in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Imagine that. The investigation uncovered allegations that concessions covering millions of acres were illegally reassigned in 2020 and converted to carbon credit projects without uh, public oversight. Uh, the boom in opaque conservation titles controlled by foreign investors raises concerns over the potential for future carbon offset abuses. And the, the whole program, it, it, it is one big corruption uh, soaked. Uh, it, it, obviously, this is corporate greenwashing bullshit. Uh, all it does is give these giant uh, global uh, planet-eating corporations the green light to go right on about their business uh, acting like that in exchange for eating one part of the planet they're going to save some other part of the planet. Uh, it's crap. Anyway... Uh, Okay, this is, uh, you figure out what this is. <clears throat> I am pro-mining. Yes, indigenous opposition to Philippine mine project falters 
a planned roughly six billion dollar copper and gold mine in the southern Philippines has faced opposition since reserves were first confirmed in the 1990s with more than two dozen people killed since then in conflicts relating to the project. Yes. Uh, most affected are the indigenous however you pronounce B-T-A-A-N uh, for decades cl clans and even families have been split over their opposition or support for the mining company which is promised to support education, health, livelihood and development projects yes with the national government in Manila pushing pro-mining policies to jump start <clears throat> the economy and as pressure mounts within families and communities some of the mine's staunchest opponents are reconsidering their stance and I have been having this rant now for 13 years when I was working on an article for Manga Bay and writing a book <clears throat> down in 2009 down in the Brazilian Amazon. And what I found there was much to my little lefty uh, noble savage, the myth of the noble savage infected brain and heart that a, a hell of a lot uh, uh, of the Amazon Indians being most affected by oil exploration, gas exploration, gold mining, all of the rest of it, uh, I would say the majority of them were in support of these various extractive industries that directly <clears throat> was wrecking their own health and the ecosystem. This is this little noble savage, the myth of the noble savage secret that these little lefties don't want out of the bag. <clears throat> people are people, okay? There are plenty of indigenous people. And, and, and as the younger generations are coming along, you know, born with these cell phones in their hands and whatnot, more and more indigenous people are going to be in more and more support of these planet-eating schemes. Obviously, uh, some of the indigenous people are going to be horrified, just like some of the honkies, uh, you, you know, uh, across the planet are going to be horrified. I think that's a squirrely over there walking across the yard like that. That squirrely like that! We have a squirrely invading our... You went up that tree. <clears throat> so, uh, anyway, is anybody still suffering the myth of the noble savage? They're being taken in by the by all of the uh, you know the little fruits of global industrial civilization. If it's a cell phone versus a a wetland, you know more and more people are going to choose the the cell phone. All right, this is one for tomorrow's Hopium Roundup. Bridges in the sky carry sloths to safety in Costa Rica. Yeah, so it's all bridges in the sky. All right. <clears throat> you will not believe this. In a biodiversity haven, mining drives highest ever recorded levels of mercury. Yes, a recent study <clears throat> has found that forests in the southwestern 
Peruvian Amazon, which is exactly where I was reporting on the gold mines uh, in 2009. This is talking exactly where I was talking about this 13 years ago. Uh, recent study has found that forests in the southwestern Peruvian Amazon collect mercury uh, from the atmosphere that is used in gold mining in the Madre de Dios region. The study's authors found the highest ever recorded levels of mercury from the throughfall that ends up on the forest floor when the leaves fall on rain, washes the mercury from their surfaces. Good Lord. Uh, yep, I can see more things change the more they stay the same. All right, we see uh, Manga Bay getting into the chemtrail, the uh, solar radiation management debate on their YouTube channel uh, this week. Uh, Manga Bay is asking the questions, could aerosols be a good thing against climate change? I have not watched the video, but uh, my guess is that I'm, I'm guessing that Manga Bay tries to do an even uh, take on the big uh, solar radiation management debate and about the the frying pan versus the fire uh, for every one step forward that this shit does there's two steps backwards the question could aerosols be a good thing against climate change to the degree that the answer to that question is yes the could aerosols be a good thing for the planet on on the whole is a resounding no we have a little bit more about this later on here in this rant which i'll come back to all right uh, of course Mon manga bay coming in with a couple of uh, pieces on the new dire stark damning IPCC report yep 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 uh, anyway uh, I'll get to one here in a minute all right Honduras there you go Honduras uh, banning open pit mining citing environmental and public health concerns. The government of Honduras is no longer granting environmental permits for open pit mining projects due to the deforestation and pollution they cause. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> Honduras has a poor human rights track record when it comes to mining with numerous environmental defenders having been arrested or killed in the past decade in connection with their opposition to mines. Yes, it is unclear when the ban will go into effect or how existing open pit mining projects will be affected. My call is this is corporate greenwashing horseshit. This is the, the Honduran military industrial complex uh, version uh, making this statement to get people to go back to sleep. It will not affect on any level the existing ones and it is unclear when this ban, my guess the ban will go into effect after the entire country of Honduras is one big open mining pit. Just a hunch. Okay, 
So now uh, this is their article kind of going along with that YouTube video uh, looking at aerosol pollution. Aerosol pollution destabilizing Earth's climate and a threat to health. Aerosols are fine particulates that float in the atmosphere. Yes, human caused aerosols emitted from smokestacks, car exhaust, wildfires, and even clothes dryers have increased rapidly, largely in step with greenhouse gas aerosols the greenhouse gases responsible for climate change. Aerosol pollution kills four to six million people annually and 200,000 in the U.S. alone. <clears throat> so curbing them rapidly makes sense. However, there is a problem with that. The aerosols humanity sends into the atmosphere presently help cool the climate. So, ironically, they protect us from some of the warming that is being produced by continually emitting greenhouse gases. But scientists still don't know how big this cooling effect is or whether rapidly reducing aerosols would lead to a disastrous increase in warming. Yes. Uh, scientists say that accurately modeling the intensity of aerosol effects on climate change is vital to humanity's future. But aerosols are very difficult to model and so are likely the least understood of the nine planetary boundaries whose destabilization could threaten Earth's operating systems. And this whole thing about this aerosol cooling effect, you, here in the Doomosphere, you can go, you can find, you know, this is one of these things, whatever your preconceived notion is, you can find someone in the Doomosphere <clears throat> Uh, such as one group we don't talk about on this channel acting like, you know, that if we ban especially coal burning that the temperature of the, uh, of the atmosphere will skyrocket. While when I, I interviewed uh, Tim Garrett, an atmospheric, a, you know, basically an atmospheric aerosol physicist, uh, Tim Garrett, uh, and, and he completely poo-poos the idea that uh, the aerosols humans are producing are making any uh, measurable statistical, statistical effect on global warming. So pick your place on the continuum of what you already believe and you can go on the Doomosphere and find someone to match your level of panic or not. But anyway, moving on. Did you realize that mangroves are actually a more potent CO2 sink than the Amazon rainforest. Yes, uh, mangroves uh, can soak up to 4.3 times more carbon in the top meter of soil. Uh, but of course, we all know uh, what is going on with mangroves and in Brazil and everywhere else. Despite this carbon stock potential, Brazilian mangroves are not included in protected areas. Hmm. And there is a general lack of funding for research on the ecosystem. 
Of course it's mangroves. I, I mean, mangroves are one of the most attacked ecosystems on the planet. And uh, of course, the first thing to disappear with sea level rise are the mangrove forests. Uh, you can go down to the Everglades National Park right here in the Oasis of Freedom to see what sea level rise is doing to mangrove forest. You can kiss goodbye the world's mangrove forest. From Florida to Brazil, everywhere else, uh, the mangrove forest are literally dead in the water. Anyway, uh, let's see. All right, we have Thai authorities demolishing resorts and parks, but struggle to prosecute encroaches. More than 20 luxury resorts and mansions illegally built inside national parks in Thailand have been demolished or ordered to be demolished. Yes. Uh. <laughs> uh, good luck. The owners of the newly demolished buildings include retired military generals and prominent business people. Yep, yep, yep. Who would ever have thought that a Colombian palm oil company could be under investigation for polluting rivers? Yes. Oro Rojo began extracting palm oil in 2013 and was granted three environmental permits. Yes, two of which are now under investigation. Complaints have been filed alleging Oro Rojo is discharging waste into nearby waterways. Yes, imagine that. Uh, Anyway, we have, what was it uh, last week, the buffalo, in the water buffalo, what was it, an invasion? We now have a water buffalo frenzy uh, going on uh, in Brazil in the Brazilian Amazon where stretches of land are being raised for pasture for herds of domestic water buffalo. The deforestation is now encroaching into protective reserves with devastating environmental and social consequences. All right. For anybody does who does not understand this, we're going to go down to Papua New Guinea. The Trans-Papua Highway could lose billions and deforest millions of acres. Set to run some 4,000 kilometers, otherwise known as 2,500 miles, and being built over the course of decades, the Trans-Papua Highway cuts across the entire length of Indonesian New Guinea's two provinces. While nearly complete, it has not yet fully interlinked major cities and has raised concerns that it could open up the world's third largest swath of tropical rainforest to further deforestation. Yes, it, the highway uh, area has already lost 750,000 hectares, called it about 2 million acres 
of rainforest over the past 20 years. Uh, a new study warns that if the highway spurs a similar spate of development um, on Papua as a similar highway did on Borneo, the region could lose up to an additional four and a half million hectares, otherwise known as 11 million acres of forest. There you go. This is an interview with Bill Lawrence. I have uh, had the pleasure of interviewing Bill Lawrence here on, uh, on uh, Collapse Chronicles. I'm pretty sure it was Bill who, who says correctly that the, uh, that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, and you can be damn sure that both of these highways he mentioned here are part of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative are the single biggest threat to this planet. The number one biggest threat to this planet. The Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, that highway in Borneo and this one in New Guinea being two prime examples. <clears throat> All right. Uh, good Lord, guys. There's a lot here, and I have got to get to work. Now we have seismic surveys blowing off on the coast of South Africa. Uh... All right, but the judge is telling those oil and gas companies stop blowing out the eardrums of the whales. All right. Uh, let's do a little bit of dot connecting between rhino poop and seed dispersal. The loss of Sumatran rhinos leaves several plant species without a seed disperser. The critically endangered Sumatran rhino plays a unique role in dispersing seeds in Southeast Asian forest, and its disappearance from these landscapes is already affecting the composition of the forest. Yep, yep, yep. That's going on everywhere. Uh, we just heard about that highway in Papua. Now let's listen to uh, crop raising. Forest clearing for crop program in Papua may unleash, unleash massive emissions. An area nearly the size of Belgium will be cleared in Indonesia's Papua province to grow food crops under a new government program. A new analysis shows that this co conversion, you know, from rainforest to cropland alone could result in the release of 600 16 million metric tons of greenhouse gases, one third of what the entire country of Indonesia as a whole emits in a year, or the same as Australia's annual emissions. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, plans for how much forest will will have to be cleared remain vague. Do you think so? How about this for a brilliant idea? To save the oceans, we need marine protected areas that emphasize the actual protection 
of marine areas. Saving the ocean is possible, yes, but it requires getting serious about stopping its destruction. Hmm. For marine protection areas to work, protected has to mean what it says. There should be no halfway measures, no empty promises, no conservation that happens only on paper. Do you think so? Uh, good luck. In Brazil, evicted indigenous residents fight to reclaim their community. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, good luck on that one. All right. Let's look at one of their, you know, we've heard, uh, good Lord, how many stories on the newest Stark Dyer IPCC. I'm just going to pick this one. Climate change, a threat to human well-being and the health of the planet. The UN IPCC report reiterated the impacts of climate change on people, uh -huh. detailing areas of vulnerability. The, re the report uh, highlights the importance of indigenous and local knowledge in grappling with climate change. Yes. It also notes that some segments of society, especially the most vulnerable, will bear a disproportionate burden as a result of climate change. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay, we were just talking about marine protected areas needing to actually protect areas of the ocean. We have four new MPAs in Indonesia. All right. The four new MPAs bring the Indonesian government two-thirds of the way towards its goal of ensuring effective management of 10% of national waters by 2030. All right. We are two-thirds of the way from effectively managing 10% of Indonesia's oceans. Uh huh. All right. For fire ravaged northern Thailand, there is now an app to battle the blaze. Okay, we have an app to save the planet. Uh, what is going on with threatened wetlands in Paraguay's Lake? Yapakani, take a wild guess. Wetlands surrounding the protected Lake Yapakana in Paraguay are being filled in to allow for the construction of housing and tourism projects. Yes, in addition to providing habitats for countless species of flora and fauna, the wetlands act as a filter for fresh water and help control flooding and erosion. So, no wonder the projects were approved by the Paraguayan Ministry of the Environment, sparking an outcry uh, from congressmen want to know if protected area laws are being ignored in favor of urban development. Yes. All right. Should we pay or punish forest? Should we pay 
or punish farmers deforesting the Serato. Yes, just pay them not to deforest. How about pay them to get sterilized? All right. I did not realize there was a unicorn in Africa. This is the Okapi, the refuge of the endangered Okapi threatened by mining, poaching, and deforestation. Okapi Wildlife Reserve in the Democratic Republic of the Congo shelters some 470 mammal and bird species, including 20% of the world's remaining endangered okapis, which are kind of a giraffe. Uh, satellite data show deforestation has been increasing inside the reserve in recent years. Imagery shows the expansion of what appears to be gold mines in late 2021. Illegal mining is attracting even more people to the reserve, which in turn increases poaching and deforestation. There you go. Uh, anyway, guys, good God. Uh, Let's see, uh, three more, three more. There's about 10 more. We're going to do three more. How about latest Nigerian oil spill highlights the wretched state of the industry? An oil production vessel exploded just off the coast of Nigeria on February 3rd. Yes, uh, Nigeria's monitoring of and response to oil industry incidents is poor. Three weeks later, the size and impact of the latest spill is still unknown. And this is the second major incident reported in just the past three months and highlights potential problems as oil majors sell aging infrastructure to locally owned companies that are ill-equipped to operate them safely. Two more where I, uh, I have no clue where Banga Belatung is, oh, Indonesia. You will not believe that illegal mining fuels conflict in Indonesian tin hub of Bangoka Belatung. Tin mining is one of the world's main producers of tin mining in one of the world's main producers of the metal has sparked the latest in a series of conflicts between illegal miners and traditional fishermen in Indonesia. Do you think so? Tin mining is the backbone of the local economy, but has also proven deadly for workers and damaging to coral reefs mangrove forest and local fisheries but let's wind up in argentina where we find everything is on fire everything is on fire as flames rip through ibera national park in argentina Fires in the central Corrientes province of northeast Argentina have burned through nearly 60% of Ibera National Park, home to protected marshlands 
grasslands and forests that host an array of species. Many of these fires originated from nearby cattle ranches and spread across significant portions of the park due to a prolonged drought. Yes. Conservationists are working to relocate a number of species, including giant river otters and macaws, to places of safety. Yep, yep, yep. Move those river otters and macaws out of the way of the fire as everything is on fire. I can smell a little bit of smoke on the air here in a uh, crazy camp, crane campground, but looks like a gorgeous blue sky day with not too much smoke on the horizon, but uh, I got to get out there and get back to work and you need to get out there and get back to work while you still can. Bye, guys.